Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Herkham Baptist Church. As we continue our study on what the Bible says to the believer, and uh, we're getting to that point now where it says, uh, "You're given the great hope of Christ's return to comfort, encourage, and sustain you." Uh, the idea that uh, Jesus said He's coming again, and uh, it's one of those things we can look forward to. Uh, we can see different scriptures. We're going to look at a couple here to start with uh, this morning, and uh, hopefully it'll be a little encouragement to you. You know, as we we look around this world today and everything that's going on, and you wonder, Lord, you're gonna you're gonna come back. You you said you're just gonna come back, and and uh, we believe in the rapture that the, the Lord's gonna take His church out before the tribulation starts. But we don't know how bad it's gonna get before that time. We don't know how much we're gonna have to go through before the rapture does occur, and and so we can get uh, sometimes upset, worried, frustrated. And those kind of things. So let's go. We're going over to First Thessalonians chapter four, and we're going to look at a little bit about the, the uh, rapture. So I'm going to read. Um, I'll just read those from 13 to 18 in First Thessalonians four. Paul says, "But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye saw not even as others which have no hope." And so. There was a question about those that had died in the faith, what happened to them, and with all the things, with the rapture, or not the rapture, but the second coming of Christ, the day of the Lord, and all these things. Uh, there was people concerned about, what about those that have died? And he said right here, even as others which have no hope, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Okay, so what he's talking about there, we're looking at the rapture. Christ is going to, this is, now this is not the second coming. Okay, sometimes people get, uh, they accuse us of believing in the rapture. They say that's not, that's, we believe in two second comings. It's not, this is not the second coming. He doesn't come down to the earth. So let's go a little bit further and we'll see that. He says in verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, the word prevent or go before them which are asleep. And so what he's saying is when, when Christ returns at the rapture, then those that have died in Christ will come out and they'll go first. And those of us then, if we happen to be alive at that time, then we will follow them. Okay, so this is that's to bring them comfort. Now so they understand that those that are asleep, uh, they have died. That body is going to come out. Now to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we know that uh, the body may be in the grave, but the person is with the Lord to start with. So they're, they're going to rise and they're going to meet him in the air. Here he says, for the, verse 16, For the Lord himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And that's what we just looked at in verse 15. So the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then, then verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. That's where we get the word rapture. Uh, come caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so there's there's your the rapture of the church, and uh, we can go farther there in the chapter five. And you see that, and uh, over in chapter one, that we're not we're not going to see the judgment of God. Those that uh, believe that we're, the church is going to be here through the uh, the uh, tribulation uh, is contrary to what uh, Jesus taught, because he, we we won't face the judgment of God. There's no reason for us to face the tribulation. And so he, Paul, in this portion of his letter, is trying to comfort them. They've worried about those that have died in Christ, and he's bringing comfort to them, and you and I can draw comfort from them. In fact, in that last verse there, verse 18 in that chapter 4, Wherefore, because of all of this, he says, comfort or exhort one another with these words. So, no matter what's happened, those that have died in Christ, those that are still alive and are Christians, no matter what happens, Christ is going to come for you. He's going to come for the church, and he's going to, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and then those that are dead in Christ, they'll come out, and they'll go first. And those of us that are alive, even that shows how uh, Paul was expecting. He says right there, like, those of us, he's even talking by himself, he may even be alive at that time. So we have no idea when it is. So people that try to tell, talk about prophecy, when, when Christ is going to return for the second coming or the rapture, we have no idea. It seems more imminent. We see the, the signs that are talked about, how the, the world is getting worse and worse and worse and more uh, talk about the one world government and all those kind of things. So uh, there's more of that confusion. But he says, don't worry about it. Hey, guess what? And Jesus is coming back. In fact, I'm going to read that to you over in, in John chapter 14. We're going to look at those first few verses in John chapter 14. 
And uh, in chapter 13, we just had the, the Last Supper, and uh, he's talked to him. He said, you know what? He said, I'm going to be leaving you. And it talks about Peter denying him and everything. And so they're, they're upset. Uh, they're bothered. They're troubled. So we get to chapter 14, and verse number 1, he says, Let not, let not your heart be troubled. Don't be agitated. Don't get all concerned. He said, just relax. Uh, they said, you know, chill out. Be, ye believe in God, believe also in me. You trust in God, trust in me. He is the Son of God. He said, if you trust in God, you trust in me. He says in verse 2, In my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, that's a, a, a where it has meaning of abode. Uh, so many times people get the idea of mansions would be you know, a three-car garage and a, a big house and everything. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about a place of rest. He's talking about a place of peace. And he said, in my Father's house are many mansions or places of rest. If it were not so, if it wasn't so, I would have told you. But here's the good news. I go to prepare a place for you. And you know, in this world we have trial, we have tribulation, we have fightings and wars and everything. He says, you know what? I'm leaving. And that's what they're so concerned about. He's leaving. And so, they're, and they're all worried. They're all upset. He's told them what's going to happen. He told them earlier, and they never really understood it. But now he's really getting to that point. He said, "This is now it's happening. This is my feeling." Use the words, "My hour is here." He could say, and he said, "But don't get all upset." Like he said in verse one, "Don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I, and if I go and prepare a place for you." Okay, so I, he said, I'm going to go prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, or since I'm going to prepare a place for you, I will come again. And that's what we look back over here at the rapture. He's going to come again. And he goes ahead and finishes up in that, in that verse. He says, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So that's, what he's, that's his promise. He said here, he's telling his disciples and they're worried and he, for you and I that get uptight about things going on and you know, is it going to keep getting worse and worse and what am I going to have to go through? He says, don't worry about it. He said, I've got a place prepared for you. And he said, I'm going to come back and get you. Uh, you're, you're not going to have to go through the tribulation. You're not going to have to go through all that. He said, I'm going to come back and take care of you. And I know here he's talking to his apostles. He's talking to the twelve. They just got finished eating that supper and they're walking and they're heading over toward the Garden of Gethsemane and then he's going to go to Calvary and the, the whole Easter story that we're going to be talking about here in the next two Sundays. But the idea is, he's telling right here, he says, this is hope for you. We can't see him, but he's coming again. And so as a believer, the what happens when we receive Christ, we have something to look forward to. We have something that's on the other side of this world that's greater than what we have in this world. You realize that for those that die in Christ, this world is as bad as it ever gets. For you and I in Christ, it just gets better and better and better. But for those that die without Christ, this is the best. It's just the opposite. This is the best that they'll ever have. If, if they're laying there in the, in the bed right now and they're dying of cancer and they're in pain and agony, it's still the best that they're ever going to have if they die without Christ. And for those of us that, that I don't know how I'm going to go out of the world or any of us, we don't know that, but we know that the day is coming, either the rapture or death, and, but we know that it's just going to be better to be absent from this body. When I breathe my last breath in this natural body, I'm going to come out of this old body and whether it's going to go to the grave or where it's going to go, but I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to be out of here. I'm going to be present with the Lord. And that's what I have. That's the confidence I have because I know who I am and I know who I've believed in, who I'm trusted, and I can believe him. That's what he said over in John in the first verse there. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. You believe in God. You've trusted God. You believe in him. You believe his word. Believe also in me. Trust me, he's saying. Put your faith in me. Because I'm going to go prepare that place for you, and I will come again. He didn't say, I'm, I might come again, or I shall come again. He said, I will come again, and I'm going to come for you. I'm not coming for anybody, but I'm coming for you. I'm coming for my people. I'm coming for those that have put their faith and trust in me. And that's our consolation. That's, that's something that, of all these things we talk about, this is something that's this uh, right at the top of the heap, if you would, uh, that promise that he's coming again, that I don't, this this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through, if heaven's not my home, then Lord, what shall I do? We know that we have that home in heaven. It's a promise of God, and if that promise isn't true, then the rest of it's not true. 
we put our faith in that risen Savior. You must believe that Christ died, went to that grave, and rose again in a bodily resurrection. And after that resurrection, in 40 days of walking on this earth, he ascended back to heaven. We have that confidence. We have that knowledge. We have that hope. And that hope isn't just a wishful thinking. That's a confidence. It's absolutely sure according to the Word of God. And God who cannot lie. He wouldn't be God if he could lie, would he? He would be no different than the rest of us. But he cannot lie. And he's promised you and me, if you're listening to this today and you're not a Christian, he's promised you. He's promised you that you'll turn from your sin if you'll repent and turn and put your faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as payment for your sin. You have eternal life. And when Jesus comes back in a rapture, you'll get to go with him. But for those that have denied him, those that have turned their back on him and rejected him, they'll be left behind. There was a series done on that. A series is pretty accurate. But the idea is that if you don't put your faith and trust in Christ, you have no home in heaven waiting for you. But if you do, Christ has prepared a place for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and for this time. We just pray you would be with each one of us that we would live this life here on earth with that understanding that we have that home in heaven. We don't know what it's going to be like. We know it's great. We read things in the Bible, but you don't tell us a whole lot, Lord, but we trust you. And we know that when Jesus prepares a place, we know it's great. So we just look forward to that day. We want to enjoy the life we have here on earth. But when, we, when you're done with us here, when you take us home, we know we have a place waiting. We thank you again for loving us. We pray for those that don't know Christ as their Savior. We pray, Father, that they would turn today, that they would repent, turn from their sin, and turn and put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know then they'll have something to look forward to. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.